There's a stranger in my house. It took a while to figure out. <laughs> Oh, the neighborhood talk. Y'all ain't no more good. And I love it. We're going to talk about why I am singing that song in just one second. Y'all, if you like reality TV related content, make sure you guys subscribe to this particular channel and make sure you guys like this particular video because we got a couple of things that we need to discuss. Okay. Um, a little bit of quick housekeeping after subscribing. Make sure you guys. Click the link in the description of this video. Pre-order my new book, The Wickedest Wives. It's a series. This is book two. It will be out on May the 14th. So make sure you guys go ahead and grab that. And also check out my travel vlogs over on my personal channel on Richie Scott in Real Life, where we're taking you all through. Man, I got so much planned for that channel. It's about to be lit, okay? All right. Now, with that being said, speaking of lit, all right, and speaking of strangers in the house, the neighborhood talk, y'all took me out yesterday. So, fun fact, I was actually slated to do this video last night, but I just had a lot going on. And I also did the uh, a podcast with Dr. Chandra. If you guys aren't familiar with her work, I actually posted one of her articles during my last Potomac review, not this past week, but the week before. So we talked a little bit more about the colorism of it all in Potomac. So be sure to check that out on Thursday. I think that will be featured on Fox Soul. So anyway, let's get, let's, let's, let's take it back, 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 forth and forth. All right, Simon, <laughs> and you know, my name is Simon. Um, Simon doesn't understand why Portia chose to move back into his McMansion after her divorce filing. Says she has her own McMansion she can live in. Okay, so let's get into it. All right. <laughs> First of all, shout out to Yes, That's D, okay, the staff writer who wrote this. Um, I just, it's the magic of it all for me. Okay, so anyway, I got to read it. You <laughs> how it's written. It says it's no secret that after Portia Williams learned of Simon Guabadia's checkered past, <laughs> she wanted out of their marriage. However, it appears she doesn't want to be out of his Georgia home, according to Simon. That is, <laughs> Portia said <laughs> she is to the girls' weekend. <laughs> I'm staying in your house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these documents were obtained by Radar Online because y'all know I tell y'all all the time the documents float in the sky, <laughs> like in the in the ether. Okay, um, so Simon denies Portia's claims that he changed the locks and kicked her out of their marital home, but it's important to note that the home was purchased by Simon prior to their marriage. Now he claims. This is the only home he owns in the U.S. of the A. Now, Simon says he's been, quote, the sole payer and of the purchase and expenses on the mansion since buying it on November 8th of 2021. He also says, well, the report also says Simon informed the court that he's remained in the marital house with his children during the divorce adding that Portia has since moved back into the marital residence since filing for an emergency hearing. It's also important to note that Portia does have her own $1.8 million home that she purchased when her ex-husband, Cordell Stewart, kicked her out. <laughs> no, kicked her the heck out. <laughs> we all know Simon can take some paperwork. No, it says we all know Simon can fake some paperwork based on his criminal history. So we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out. The writer, my word, <laughs> it's the phrasing, it's the song choice, it is all of it. But moreover, I do have to wonder why it is Portia would want to want to stay in the marital home um, if it is indeed, in fact, you know, a thing where she was shocked, appalled, surprised by the report 
that she perhaps indeed was sleeping with the stranger in their home. But little did she know the stranger for her might have been Simon. Mm. Well, you know, a lot of you guys were saying a lot of these things happened back in the 90s or the 80s. So um, was Portia even born then? I don't know. But what I do know is allegedly this is the cause of you know the, all of the stuff that came out was the was the cause of the things that's happening right now i don't know what i do know is i would think that i would be wanting to get out the house you know what i'm saying it don't sound it sound like to me the worst thing in the world would be to be stuck in the house with somebody that you're trying to get a divorce from now maybe she renting out the other her her home so she can't use it I don't know. That could be definitely the case. But what do y'all think? Let me know in the chatterization down to the below. OK. Uh, for those of you guys who don't understand my lingo. Chime down in the in, in the comments. All right. So, look, let's talk about Bambi. OK. <laughs> now, I watched. The whole Bambi interview with Carlos King. I took three pages of notes. It took me two hours of my time yesterday to get through it because when I'm taking notes on these types of interviews, I'm writing everything down and I'm thinking to myself, I'm pondering, I'm like thinking about what is the, what is the story for me based on what she has given us, right? So that's the question that I'm constantly asking myself. So the interview was good if you are wanting to know more about Bambi and her version of the timeline for which we have heard various versions of from various parties, a.k.a. Diamond, a.k.a. Erica, a.k.a. Scrappy, a.k.a. Scrappy again, a.k.a. Erica again. And now we got to hear it from Bambi again. But I feel like in this version of the story, we I felt like Bambi opened up a bit more than maybe I feel like she did in previous interviews. I mean, just a couple of like little highlights outside. Well, we'll talk. Let's talk about this headline first and let's reference our friends over at its underscore on site. OK. <laughs> but they wrote in their caption, it seems like the BAM had her hooves up in a little bit of everything. Now, the headline reads, Bambi ad admits to knowingly being the sneaky link while Scrappy hopped from Erica to Diamond and dating Scrappy and Benzino at the same time. So the highlighted comment says, decided to date, marry, and then have cheering by a ninja that was playing in all three of you. Diamond and Erica's face is a choice, a bad one at that. Now, I ain't going to lie. Bambi does go on in this um, interview to talk about some poor choices that she, I don't know that she really regrets or whatever, but she does talk about, you know, looking back on certain incidences and inc certain certain things, eras in her life, you know, wherein she made some decisions that would that she would later want to rectify. Right? She talks about meeting. Basically, dating Scrappy or kind of hanging out with him or vibing, as the kids say these days, while Scrappy was on Love and Hip Hop with Erica. Okay, so let's get into it. Some notes, all right, that I that I made, right, and we're going to talk about this. You just a little bit in detail about what I think about it. First of all, if you just read the headline, right, and you look at this, when I think about the headline and in context with what she said and everything that she told us, I, too, question, why would you then marry this individual, right? Because you got to figure that this man is still playing 
as I stated before, he's still baking. I, I referenced the cake, right? And, you know, I don't want to just say this about men because it could be men. It could be it could be a woman, depending on like where where she's at in her in her life and in her space. But somebody like Scrappy, I feel like. I look at it like baking a cake, right? And a lot of men, you know, especially in the younger years, you know, they, you know, they baking, right? The, the cake is baking, right? And you don't really take that cake out the oven and really serve it to your guests <laughs> until you are quite sure that the cake is all the way fully baked on the inside. And it don't seem to me like Scrappy is fully even baked at this point. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that you just got to understand when your food is done and when it's not. And when to really eat it and serve it, because you won't you don't want to serve an uncooked dish to your people. OK, so you got to understand how to how to look at somebody and say. No, you're not finished baking yet. You you still got some 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 growing to do in this in this space right here, because she will later talk about, you know, when she entered the marital contract, you know, she entered knowing full well what it was that she was signing in terms of her duties as a wife, right? So she showed up as a wife to somebody who was not ready to show up as a husband, essentially, is what she was saying. And then I have to say, then at that point, given what you knew from start to finish, why didn't you understand that he was probably never meant to be more than one of your side pieces? Just like you might have been one of his side pieces. I'm not putting a, a negative or a positive on the word side piece at this point, because in the context for which we are using it, it really just means somebody that you got on the side that you hanging out with, that you doing that may not be your main. Right. So if you know that you've been the side piece and he been your side piece, as you described in the interview, then for me, it's kind of like we why would you make your side piece your main piece ever? And I understand she was like, even with the Benzino situation, she talks about dating both of them at the same time. Really, I mean, I think that the whole at least dating of the Benzino was really more for a look for being on love and hip hop because she talked about, you know, leaving basketball wives and transitioning to love and hip hop and making more sense because of the scrappy, I guess, and then maybe the Bino, Benzino connection as well as, you know, her doing the rap stress thing of it all, right? So again, there had there was definitely a desire to continue to do the TV thing. And, you know, I can understand why in, 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 in retrospect, somebody might say, well, you use, Mama D might say you use my son to get on TV. But at the end of the day, when people think about, honestly, when you think about being on TV, I mean, I, I really need everybody to stop and think. The people who are on TV and on reality TV, they do want to be there. They will do things to be to get there. So that ain't no diss in my mind that you use somebody to be there because to a certain degree, relationships can be co-beneficial, right? They can be beneficial to both parties. Some of both parties are getting something from it. So I feel like both parties were getting something from that situation. Uh, Scrappy, you know, uh, Erica, I mean, uh, Bambi talks about how Scrappy was saying that he put Erica on Love and Hip Hop so she could get some bread, too. So, I mean, everybody is trying to eat. So at the same at the end of the day, I'm not really hating on anybody trying to, you know, use use their come up, especially when they are willing participants. So I'm going to let that one go. Right. But anyway, let's get back to it. And I know I'm getting kind of deep. And if I'm too deep for you, then just, just keep keep swimming. OK, keep swimming. Um, tread water if you have to. All right. Now, she met Scrap in 2010 when he and he was trying to get with her. But her friend was like, no, nah, he dating Diamond. She thought it was a playful thing. And so when she caught when he did, when they did talk, he she was like, yo, you got a girlfriend? He was like, you know, yeah, yada, yada, yada. And then she saw him out, you know, with Diamond like two times. And a girl that was cool with Diamond told her, you know, um, that she should link up with Diamond, which is interesting to me because I'm like, I wouldn't even want to link up with you because I know that you dating this dude that I'm that is like playing around that I'm, you know, you know, kind of like texting and, and, and maybe, 
you know, having some shenanigans with not sleeping with, but just shenanigans. So she does end up meeting up with Diamond. They meet up in the girl's car, or somebody's car, and they be they was talking, and they was it wasn't a vibe there, so they didn't make no music together or something like that. So, you know, at one point, you know, uh, he pulled up and told her that you know um, he broke up with Diamond, and you know how Diamond left him for Soldier Boy, and she felt bad for him, and he offered her to record at his house, and. Then they started being cool, and then it was he said that he was doing loving hip hop with his baby mama, but she thought that Diamond was the baby mama because I guess maybe Diamond was, you know, hanging out with 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 the uh, with with the with the daughter. I don't really know. So, but she was confused, and and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself now. I know you're young at this point, but at, at a certain point in time, you got to be like, if it's if it's this much confusion going on, I don't need to be around it, right? Period. For me, anyway. But we, everybody has been young and dumb at a certain point. So I'm going to try to like, I'm going to let that go. Some of the stuff that I'm not going to let go. But anyway, um, she started, you know, so they started filming Love and Hip Hop and he would call her during filming and he called and said he got into a fight with Stevie J, but she would not repeat what he allegedly told her happened between Erica and Jocelyn, which leads me to believe that she might want us to believe that Erica got the beat down by Jocelyn, but I don't know. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, they was hanging out after scenes. You know, he was hanging out with um with Scrap. She was hanging out with Scrappy, but he was telling Bambi that he was just trying to help Erica get a bag. Now, towards the end of the season, they started getting closer and realized that they really liked each other. And then he introduced her to Steph and Mona at one point in time. Steph and Mona being producers of the show, I guess. All right, so especially with Mona being the name. Steph, I don't know who that is. I probably shouldn't know, but I don't. Anyway, um, he said, oh, she said she started to notice a pattern with him and Erica, and he kept denying that he was with her. And at that point, she ended up meeting Kirk and Benzino. And somehow Benzino was like, yo, we're going to do this scene at the pool. And she talks about how they were cool, nothing more. And so they did the scene at the cabin, but her and Scrappy were still talking and cool. And she said that this was before he went to rehab. So he ends up getting locked up the night that they went to the cabinet. She didn't know why. She says that he was like all of their boyfriend. OK, Diamond, Erica and her, because at the end of the day, she didn't know what he was doing and he didn't know what she was doing. They could do whatever they wanted to do. And that was it. So this is my thing, too. I get it to a certain degree. You know, it, it, people always say, like, you know, they look at women differently, I guess, when women want to do, you know, uh, want to date it and do as they please. You know what I'm saying? But men can do it and it's OK. So for me, I'm kind of like. For me, I'm like, eh, you know, it's like. <sighs> you know, do what you do. Right. It's just the optics of it. And you got to think about the optics of it, right? Because at the end of the day, your entry onto the show is that you are being filmed with Benzino and a married man. So now you got to go. And, and she claims she had not seen that she didn't really know who Kirk and Rashida was. But I'm like, girl, I mean, first season was out. So we knew K. Michelle and Rashida was fighting all season. And she, we knew, you know what I'm saying? So how did you not know that? So anyway... She ends up apologizing, you know, to Kirk and Rashida because the girl who was in the hot tub with Kirk was doing interviews. She is adamant that she never slept with Kirk. She is adamant that she never um, did anything more than give Benzina a smooch. And that was the extent to their relationship. And after the scene ended, she left. Some of the other girls stayed. So I don't know what happened with that. But the girl that was with Kirk in the bathtub started doing interviews. Apparently, Bambi says she had to pull up on the girl because the girl was doing candy coat at nights. And I'm like, what? OK, so she was doing candy coat at nights when it was Rashida and candy cool back then. I, I don't I don't know whether that was I, I didn't I, I didn't quite get that. Um, But Bambi says she pulled up. Roll up, roll up. And so she ended up rolling up on the girl or calling up to the Big Tigger show while the girl was doing the interview with Big Tigger and all that kind of stuff like that. Yada, 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 whoop de woo woo She ends up apologizing on the radio to Kirk and Rashida, and she apologized to them in person as well. 
listen, if Kirk and Rashida are cool with it at this point in time, I'm cool with it. I mean, I ain't no need in looking back a decade ago to something that happened back then. My my thing is not necessarily what happened a decade ago. My thing is Bambi talks about, you know, the time period that, you know, they kind of went through their ups and downs and then they got engaged. They didn't they they didn't get married and then they broke up and she got with somebody new who's a basketball player who was single with no kids and who treated her well and she didn't have to do nothing for him. But then Scrappy playing around the internet on, and online like he did and, and 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 doing all kinds of shenanigans was able to win her back over with all of his shenanigans. And to a certain degree, I would have to ask myself, how much of this chaos did you enjoy? How much of this chaos did you enjoy enough to also say, I want to bring this back to the television, right? And then it's like, for me, looking back on it in retrospect, it's like when you think about all the stuff that you feel like he had put you through, if that's what you feel, it's like, I don't understand why I get back together with him. That's what I don't understand. Like it that that to me is the is the most nonsensical part of it. And then I guess because I'm looking at it from an observer's perspective and I'm not in it. Cause do I think that people could deserve second chances? Absolutely. Absolutely. They they can, right? But did you ever feel like he had changed? Because even now she talks about how, you know, he is saying all of this stuff about Erica Dixon online. But just yesterday, I guess he was at her house telling her he loved her and missed her and acclaiming that he had posted something online about how he loved and missed her, but he ended up deleting it. And she also toys around with the notion that she is back in the in the in the presence of this basketball player that she was dating who ain't got no drama, no, you know, no baby mamas, no kids or nothing like that. Um, but he don't trust her. Right. And she's like, I get it. I wouldn't trust me either. So, you know, if here's the thing at the end of the day, um, I felt like it was an interesting interview because it was interesting to hear her perspective on things, um, you know, and, and how they navigated their relationship. Um, but I think upon hearing all the details, it was obvious to me that this was something that should have ended a long time ago and all of the signs were there. But that's just my thought, my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And of course, we will catch you in the next video.